and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, over the last few months, we have seen HPPD chemistry get really inexpensive. So the temptation may be on your farm to say, you know what, I'm going to use a whole bunch of HPPD. Maybe I'll even use it twice in my corn this year. We really want to caution you against that, and we're going to talk about exactly why today. We've also got a couple of bugs that are thought to be of minor importance that actually created some big time problems in 2017. We'll talk about how to get them under control. We've got a tough to control weed of the week coming up later in the show, as well as our Iron Talk segment. But first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about ground sterilants, what exactly they are, and when you should and should not use them. Brian and I learned a lot of really good lessons when we were kids because we were trying out some different things. So we heard about ground sterilants where you could spray them on some soil and keep that soil basically black and weed free all throughout the season. Well, we were used to running the weed trimmer like around our grain bins, for example, and we were out there every week trimming weeds and we thought, man, dad's got this ground sterilant in the shed. Let's try some of that around the bins. And so, you know, it's just a nice, innocent way to get into a product like that. And, and you know what? It worked really well for us and it did cut down on how long it took us to do weed trimming because we didn't have to trim around them anymore. However, we learned that ground sterilants are very tightly bound to the soil, and if you happen to get a big rain that washes soil, well, wherever that soil ends up, that ground sterilant does too, and it happened to wash down through some desirable lawn for us, just in a little strip. But it was enough to teach us a lesson that you have to be careful where you're applying products like this. Well, when you think about that too, I would say, hey, if you've got a bunch of rocks and hills, you know, right away you're probably thinking, ooh, parking lot, this would be a great idea for a parking lot. But what's going to happen with that parking lot? If you get any wash, if you've got a hill, it ends up down at the bottom of the parking lot. Well, again, if there's desirable vegetation there, that may not be a good thing. Well, ground sterilants are really useful. And, and we talked about just a couple real quick examples. You think about underneath a fence line that's really tough to reach. You can't reach it with your lawn. All or right, that let's kind of hold, thing. hold up right there. As soon as you say that, Darren, I wouldn't say use these in all fence lines. Personally, I'm not a big fan of them a lot of times in fence lines. And Here's the reason why. Because you use these ground sterilants, they're going to kill your perennial grass that's there. And then when they eventually run out, because they always do eventually, they might last for six months or three months or maybe even a year. But eventually they run out. Well, what's the first thing that comes back? Weeds. Okay, so then you either have to be right out there again right away or stuff kind of looks bad. So I've actually kind of liked in many cases where I want stuff to look great, I want a lawn to look great, not using a ground sterilant and going out there every single week with a weed trimmer. Well, I find it an interesting discussion and you may be thinking, wow, I'm the guy that does the weed trimming. I think this sounds like a great idea. And you may be the guy like Brian that's like, ah, all I see is potential problems here. Maybe I'll leave that product on the shelf. The point is there are products out there that can control weeds for a long period of time. Uh, and ground sterilants are, are certainly used for those types of situations both at home and in business situations too. Just a couple examples here, Hyvar and Pramatol are products that we've used. Pramatol, for example, comes in both a liquid and a dry. So again, if you wanna use a ground sterilant, you certainly can, but just experiment with them on a small scale first and maybe learn in your situation if they are or are not going to fit. When it comes to our Weed of the Week, we'll talk about exactly which products may work to control it coming up later in the show. I know a lot of people that have them and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top notch. The quality of this building is second to none and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here they're just in awe. Morton Building. For work, for life, for generations.
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Unlock your nutrient investment with QuickRoots technology. It contains two powerful microbes that can help free nutrients bound in your soil, which can improve access to key nutrients for healthy crops, N, P, and K. Applying QuickRoots technology to seed can lead to improved root and shoot growth, increased yield potential, and maximized nutrient investment. See how you can make your fertilizer dollar go further at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express End Cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma, but Wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. SureK is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. When Darren and I were talking about, well, what should we discuss on the show today? I, I think it was Darren's idea when we talked about a couple of insects that we've had some problems with. We actually had to spray for painted lady butterflies a couple of times now on our farm. Kind and of, then, kind of anyway. Well, yeah, kind of. And then this new bug, Darren, what's this other one? All right, gall midge larvae. <laughs> now, when I say larvae, that should tell you, oh, hold on, I thought you said midge. Well, a midge versus a larvae, that's a little different thing. It's right. something flying around versus something like a little worm. And here's the big thing with both of these bugs is we're concerned about certain stages in the life cycle, not necessarily all of them. For example, the, the actual painted lady butterfly, do I care about the butterflies? Nope, I don't. They could be out in my field, I really don't care. Not hurting anything, I'm not worried about them, I'm not gonna spray for them. But when they're in the larvae stage, they're the thistle caterpillar. I don't wanna see thistle caterpillars in my field if they're at high numbers because they can cause some defoliation and some issues with my soybeans. The good news here is Darren mentioned defoliation. Well, just straight out defoliation is not that big a problem. The problem is when you have a bug feeding on your plant, it does open it up for disease, so that worries me a little bit. And then the other thing I'm gonna look at is, do I have other harmful insects out in that field? If I do, I'm probably gonna pull the trigger on and spray insecticide. Well, thistle caterpillars or painted lady butterflies, we've got an issue with them probably one out of 10 years on our farm. So it's something that is not an every year deal, but it's just reminding us that we need to be out there scouting all the time every season because you just don't know which bug is gonna pop up this year. You may say, well, I spray for aphids every single year, fine. So aphids are really common in your area, but there's gonna be a whole lot of bugs of minor importance that could be out there like the thistle caterpillar or painted lady butterfly. Now, one this year that did get a little alarming to me because it is robbing significant yield, uh, especially in the area that I was in, in Southern South Dakota, extreme Western Iowa and Northeastern Nebraska. We're seeing kind of a new insect for soybeans. If you do a little research on it, you'll hardly find any. It's the gall midge larvae. Now in the spring, there's a little midge that will lay some eggs on very young soybean plants. So we'll see that midge out in fields a lot of times in April and very early May. And they lay eggs and then that soybean plant develops in May, June, July. And all of a sudden those little larvae get into the stem and they get just underneath that outer skin layer on the stem and so you can kind of see them in a little break in the stem, but they're pretty safe from the insecticides that we would spray. So how do you control these things? 
That's the real challenge. So we're trying to learn more about gall midge larvae. We tried some applications of bifenthrin or capture uh, right during that time period, and we did see that we made an impact and we greatly lessened the number of them. The tough thing is, when are those flights going to be? When are those midge flying? And when are they going to be laying their eggs? We may need to be out there two or more times trying to spray bifenthrin to time it just right to try to knock them out. So similar control methods, you're going to use insecticide either way. Bifenthrin's good, the other pyrethroid's not too bad, but it's much easier with the painted lady larvae as opposed to these gall midge, especially if it's the gall midge larvae stage, that's just about impossible. You've got to get it in the midge stage there. So I guess we would just encourage you, as we always do, be scouting your fields, use a good seed treatment, especially something systemic like Poncho Gaucho Cruiser, that will help a little bit, and then time your applications properly with insecticide. Insecticide's dirt cheap. You're talking two, three bucks an acre. It's no big deal. It's just, you've got to actually be out there and do it. So you may be thinking, well, how do I know if a problem like gall midge larvae is going to blow up to be this big thing on my farm? You really don't. I was out on one farm call, I was calling on one farmer, stopping out to see him, and he said, you know, I got this problem and I'm losing yield in the same little geography every time I plant beans. So this side of the road's beans this year, next year it's across the road, and I seem to have more yield loss around the outer borders of, of these fields. When we started figuring out what was happening, we started splitting open some stems and finding these little orange larvae in there. And we started asking a lot of questions and many of the experts that we turned to to say, hey, have you ever seen this before and what have you done? Said, oh, that's no big deal. And oh, it's really rare. But then we started talking to more of the neighboring farmers and found this is a bigger area than what anybody was aware of. So if you've got problems on your farm and you find an, an interesting insect that you see, wow, there's more of these out here than I've ever seen before, start asking some questions, talk to your agronomist, talk to Extension or university people in your area uh, and see if you can find an answer to what's going on. Well, fortunately, we do have a great answer for our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what it is coming up later in the show. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Smart farming is playing hockey with my son. All right, sweetie, are you excited to go? Yeah. <laughs> Smart Farming is going on more family vacations. Smart Farming is getting some much needed rest. Smart Farming is spending more time doing what you love. Make it happen with Farm Command. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10 30 4 -0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent. Their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro Liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before.
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Well, today on the show, we're going to talk a little about the HPPD chemistry. What I mean by that is products like Callisto, for example, there are generic versions of that. There's Laudus, Impact, some others that are all kind of similar. They turn weeds white. The HPPDs have come way down in price, so the temptation is, hey, I should use a lot of these on my farm, but we're concerned about resistance, we're also concerned about carryover, and that's why we wanted to talk about it today. Well, the thing with the HPPDs, Brian, is they're not just post-emerge options, they're also pre-emerge options, and so there gets to be a lot of confusion out in the market of, hey, I'm gonna use this pre-emerge premix that is pretty cheap now all of a sudden i can i can get it for a lot less money than in the past and then i have my favorite post-emerge option and when you do a little further investigation with something like the ag phd mode of action app you find oh this has an hppd in it and my post product has an hppd in it that could lead to problems on your farm we actually have seen some water hemp that is resistant to hppd where we found this was back in 2016, and the reason why is because the farmer had used a product pre-emerge, Corvus, and Corvus has an ALS and an HPPD. Okay, then the farmer followed post-emerge with Laudus, which is only HPPD. All right, well, we already know most water hemp is resistant to ALS. So in effect, the farmer only had one effective mode of action on his water hemp. Well, guess what? The guy had something like 5,000 acres of corn, solid water hemp out there. That's not a real good thing. So we get very, very concerned about that. It's just a bad recommendation. You've got to have multiple modes of action trying to attack some of these really tough weeds like water hemp or palmer pigweed. Well, you have to have multiple effective modes of action. So saying, well, I tank mix the HPPD with Roundup. Well, if Roundup's not working and the weed's resistant, you've got one effective mode of action. So anytime you're putting an HPPD out, that's really rule number one. Always make sure you have another effective mode of action with it. Now, here's how I lay it out for, for what I'm doing with HPPDs. If I really want to use it pre-emerge, and there are some weeds that HPPDs are really good on uh, when you use them pre-emerge, some of the small seeded broadleaves, if they're not resistant, that kind of thing, you're gonna use an HPPD that also has a group 15 with it for grass control, fine. You can do that, but now you're pretty much leaving your post-emerge option as status. Uh, if you're coming back with status post, I'm fine using an HPPD pre. Now, let's say that, well, I don't want to use status post because that has dicamba in it, and I'm going to use dicamba in my extend soybeans. That's fine. Then I'd save your HPPD for post and use something else pre. By that something else pre, it could be Sure Starter Triple Flex. It could be Verdict. It could be a straight group 15. You have lots of options. That's the whole point. When we start talking about broadleaf control in corn, it's not that tough. Hey, we really like the HPPD chemistry. This has been a great addition to many weed control programs. What we're talking about today is just don't get caught up in how cheap they've become and overuse them or misuse them. And besides that, if they aren't cheap and you say, well, my dealer says it's the same price as it's been the last three years, well, chances are you may want to switch HPPDs that you're using because some of the HPPDs have come off patent. They're very similar to some of them that haven't. Now, there are some differences, but they're pretty similar, and you may save quite a bit of money just by switching products within that same family. And also pay attention to the rebates because there are some big rebates now. So one way or the other, you should be paying a lot less than you did three years ago for HPPD chemistry. Well, saving money is good, especially if you have to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what works on this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our 
Weed of the Week is Wild Buckwheat. Uh, another one of those viney type weeds, yep. Brian. And, and when we think about the viney type weeds, typically HPPDs are not our favorite choice. So yep. now we didn't pick the Weed of the Week just because the HPPDs are not going to be our lead products on it. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind whenever you've got a vine Typically, we like to look at something different. Yeah, we do. And keep in mind, too, that with wild buckwheat, it is, it is just an annual. It's not a perennial or anything. It doesn't have a big rhizome or an enormous root, but it can be a real problem. And we have seen it spreading around the country, in part because Roundup is weak on it naturally. It's not necessarily resistant. It's just Roundup has never done a good job controlling this particular weed. And then we are seeing, you know, hey, HPPDs that are super common, not real great on it. So when you've got a bunch of chemistry out there commonly used that isn't effective on a weed, well, what happens with that weed? It spreads just that much more. Well, and most of the pre's aren't doing a good job on wild buckwheat. The exception, I would say, has been pursuit. When you've got a pre that's got some pursuit in there, it seems to do pretty good on wild buckwheat. But most of the pre's that we're using in corn, for example, really don't hit wild buckwheat very well. So all of a sudden, if you're putting a lot of your weight of your program into the pre, well, you better be timely on that post app. And what, what's happening, we're getting so many more broadleaf killers in their pre, and rightly so, because we've got a lot of small seeded broadleaves out there that by the time we're out spraying the wild buckwheat, it's had time to vine out and it's more difficult to get. Yep, that's absolutely the key is you've got to get to it early, suppress it with the pre-emerge herbicide, but then come with your product early post. So when I start talking early post, I'm right away thinking dicamba in corn, dicamba on extend soybeans. If I do those things, I'm probably going to wipe out my buckwheat. Well, in soybeans, you've got some different options. And I mentioned Pursuit or Raptor before. And Pursuit is in a lot of these pre-mixes that we're using pre. And, you know, we haven't used it. It's been too expensive. There are some limits on rotation, that kind of thing. But guess what? Pursuit's another one of those products, just like the HPBDs, that have really come down in price. Yep, so a half rate's probably three bucks. So you can throw that out there. That's absolutely going to help. But anyway, I want to go back to the pre or to the post-emerge products. So early post, I'm thinking a lot about dicamba. Later post, then I'm looking at buckteral in corn. That's probably my preferred product. Otherwise, if I'm thinking soybeans, yeah, I, I, I would probably lean toward Pursuit if I didn't use that pre-emerge, but otherwise you've got Liberty and Liberty Link soybeans. We probably field more calls about wild buckwheat in wheat growing areas than we do in, in other areas, and that's fortunate because it's easier to control in wheat. We could start off with something like Sharpen Down, come back, post-emerge. Many of the products that you're going to use post-emerge have some level of buckteral in them, like the old Bronate, for example. My favorite choice of a premix that has that bromoxanil in it is Husky. Husky does a nice job, even though it's got an HPPD in there, you've got a pretty good strong rate of buckteral in there too. Hey, when you mentioned wheat, that just got me thinking about some of the burn down situations like post harvest, that type of thing. Make sure you've got some 2,4-D or dicamba in there, not just Roundup. Well, that's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Unlock the nutrients in your soil with Tag Team LCOXC Liquid Soybean, a triple action biological product that helps improve nutrient access. Together with the LCO molecule, a rhizobia delivers nitrogen fixing benefits, while an additional microbe makes phosphate in the soil more available. Three powerful technologies in one extra concentrated formulation. See how it can help your yield potential at monsantobioag.com unlock. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before.
smart farming is playing hockey with my son. Alright, sweetie, are you excited to go? Yeah. <laughs> smart farming is going on more family vacations. Smart farming is getting some much needed rest. Smart farming is spending more time doing what you love. Make it happen with Farm Command. I know a lot of people that have them and I don't know anybody that doesn't like their Morton building. The crew was really in my book top notch. The quality of this building is second to none and they make sure before you walk away that you're happy. This is my dream barn. I think it ended up looking even better than I thought it would. People love it. When they get in here, they're just in awe. Morton Buildings, for work, for life, for generations. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Planting corn early in 2018 may be less risky than in the past. I'll explain in today's Iron Talk. Let's go back to the early 1990s for a minute. Liquid insecticide didn't mix with starter fertilizer, so it often didn't get used. It was a pain, so many farmers stuck with dry boxes on the planter, or they gave up the starter fertilizer if they wanted to use liquid insecticide. Fortunately, Capture LFR came out with the formulation they termed liquid fertilizer ready. Finally, liquid fertilizer and liquid insecticide could be used together in the same tank, and usage of both grew. Growers across the country, and even Brian and me on our farm, saw some nice gains with headline fungicide in furrow and wanted to add that to the mix but fungicide doesn't really like to mix with anything else. Now, it was a hurdle that only adding a second tank would overcome. Why was this such a big deal? Because just like on our farm, you may want to plant early, and early planting often results in more yield if you can get a good stand. This is where starter fertilizer, insecticide, and especially additional fungicide really pay a nice return on investment. Last year, two new products came out, the same folks who brought Capture LFR technology to the market found a way to make Headline and Capture in a couple of different premixes that would not only mix together, but would mix well with liquid fertilizer. Manticore and Timetry are both premixes of Headline and Capture LFR, and they both performed very well last year. Now, if you've already added the second tank to do all the things you need to do with liquids on your planter, this may not be a big deal for you, or you may be thinking about using one of these premixes and now adding a fourth product to the mix, However, if you have one tank and three things to accomplish, you're in good shape. Planning should be a lot more fun and a lot less risky with these new products in 2018. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. That's all the time we've got for today's show. But before we go, we just wanted to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. Our show is on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't forget to tune back in next week for the next Ag PhD TV show, too. We've got a Farm Basics, Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.